Okay, welcome guys. This is uh, the second year we're doing a live session to talk about the Mobile Stroke Program and the Mobile Stroke Rescue Program. We're happy to answer any questions anyone has on the live feed. If not, we can tell you a little bit about our unit until that happens. And so basically, with the Mobile Stroke Program, we're building an, uh, a system where it brings the first 30 to 60 minutes of a hospital stay to the patient. And as you know, in stroke, every minute counts. Time lost is brain lost. And for every minute of ischemia, about 2 million neurons are dying. And so our hope is to treat patients faster and earlier. And with these units, we have the capability of something any other ambulance is not able to do. We're able to do labs, not only that, but we're able to do CTA imaging and CT parenchymal imaging. And we're able to treat patients with clot busting medications and hemorrhage reversing medications very early on in the field. Any questions so far from the group? Can you describe the paramedics role on the unit? Absolutely. Captain Hill can do that. I can describe that for you. So the paramedic acts as the chauffeur, so to speak. So we, um, we're trained in emergency response. So we drive the unit to the call, code three, license sirens. Um, we respond to the call along with another paramedic resource. That resource then transfers care to us. Um, Dr. Noor will do her own assessment of the patient, determine whether or not the patient meets the criteria where she wants to scan the patient. Uh, from there, um, the paramedic who's assigned to this unit will then start the IV, uh, pre prepare the, uh, the unit for CT scan, and then once everything is scanned, they will transport to the hospital. So I think to give a big overview, I think Dr. Uh, Captain Hill did an excellent job of giving us an overview about the role of uh, our unit as an ad additional resource unit. So we're a specialty unit. We don't respond in lieu of the first responders. We respond additional to the first responders as a specialty unit. And typically when we're dispatched in the field, we arrived on scene and hopefully at times with the initial response unit or shortly thereafter or sometimes before. And both units evaluate the patient. If this patient looks like a neurologic patient or a problem we can help with, the patient is admitted to our unit and the first responder team is able to receive another call. And once that happens, um, we have a team of four personnel. One is our paramedic who acts in their scope of uh, practice as a paramedic and also is able to drive the vehicle. One is a CT technologist who is able to run the scans. And another is a critical care, in our case, a neurocritical care trained nurse and a stroke physician. And the stroke physician can be either on the vehicle or by telemedicine. And for now, the physician is on the vehicle. Once we assess that patient, the patient comes into our rig and now the encounter begins, so to speak. And we're keeping very close tabs on times and how we're doing once the patient is admitted into our encounter. And uh, the things that happen from there on are that the patient makes sure we have IV access in the patient, the patient gets hooked up to the monitor, we get labs which include uh, INR through the Coagu check or Chem 8 Plus through ISTAT. We also are able then to either scan the brain parenchyma or additionally, for a subset of patients, also do CT angiograms. And we carry TPA, which is the clot busting medication, of course. We carry Kcentra to reverse hemorrhage. We hope to carry Praxabine to reverse hemorrhage related to Pradaxa soon. And we have antihypertensives and drips for many of these medications. We're also able to deal with um, active seizures in the field and any ACLS requirement. Um, is Santa Monica Fire Department the only fire department that you work with? So I think Santa Monica Fire Department took the biggest initiative of believing in this program and really investing uh, their personnel into it and the personnel who was interested into it. And uh, we went live with Santa Monica first in LA County, but because LA County has a very insightful stroke systems of care, we also became a mutual aid resource or a shared regional resource of LA County. So now in theory, we can work with any fire department in LA County. And in fact, we added our second fire department who is LA County Fire Department. We operate in the LA County Fire Department field as a mutual aid resource with our own team. So our own Santa Monica Fire Paramedic is our permanent team member. Um, from the paramedics perspective, is there anything that is especially exciting or different or is it pretty much business as usual just now stroke is involved? Well, I, I can tell you personally, uh, working on this unit, I've become a better paramedic. Um, I have Dr. Noor with me in the front seat, so we're driving around all day long. I'm picking our brain, learning more. 
Uh, in fact, um, it was about, I don't know, three weeks ago, we had a call where uh, we had a, a lady who was, she had basically na nausea, vomiting, and a headache. Um, most paramedics would say, okay, you know what, we're going to ship you off to the hospital, basic life support, not follow up. Um, but because of the extra tra training and education I've gotten from Dr. Noor, it kind of raised a red flag. So the MSU was in service that day. I was actually working on the fire engine that day, so I requested the MSU. Uh, the MSU showed up. She ended up um, having a scan done by Dr. Noor, and Noor, Dr. Noor realized that she had a bleed. Um, so it was something, based on our protocols, that even if we thought it was a stroke, she would have gone to the closest stroke center, which is not a comprehensive stroke center. Uh, thereby delaying treatment. But because they were able to do the scan here in the MSU, we were able to bypass the closest stroke center and go to a comprehensive stroke center, which was what the patient needed. I think that's a very important point. And uh, for the case of that patient, uh, uh, Captain Hill and our paramedic, Kenny Harrell, Kenny, if you want to come in, um, also recognize that this patient was more than just a typical headache. And that's really important because even in our LA County uh, systems of care, we are routing patients based on the severity of their symptoms. And for this patient, she didn't have a stroke scale of 10 or 20. She had a stroke scale of zero. The only thing she has was the headache and uh, her clinical presentation was very classic for a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And in fact, when we scanned her, we did find the subarachnoid hemorrhage. We we're also able to perform a CTA in the field that showed a basilar tip aneurysm. And that patient was taken directly from there to the angio suite and to treatment uh, shortly thereafter. Um, we had a comment in that um, uh, Donald was very thankful for these units. Uh, his father-in-law had a heart attack recently and was picked up in one of the stroke units. And he's very thankful. So what you guys are doing is greatly appreciated. Um, Kenny, do you have anything additional to add um, from your perspective of what's different about this unit versus other uh, units from that you've What's different on? from the mobile stroke unit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just that uh, we're there faster, we can do a lot more quicker. As a paramedic in the field, I'm pretty limited on the interventions I can do for stroke. So being on the MSU, it's been uh, pretty great to see the differences and how much more help we can give. Awesome. Yes. So that's an excellent question. The, to repeat the question, for the case of the patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage we have, did the patient go straight to the andro suite or did they have to stop in the ER? And that's a protocol that we um, really refine with each receiving site. We're a non-denominational center. We uh, drop off to patients everywhere in LA County. And uh, for that patient in particular, our closest comprehensive center based on base station directives was uh, comprehensive UCLA. For uh, stroke patients, we've worked out if we have a suspected large vessel syndrome and we have CT evidence of hyperdense vessel sign or CTA evidence that the vessel is occluded and the patient otherwise has no airway needs, we have agreed with our ER system to do just assessment on the rails and the patient doesn't get admitted to the ER at all. In fact, they are a direct admission, they go straight to the angio suite. So they are being assessed, they are still unreported. Yes. And I think that uh, speaks a lot towards, especially for ischemic stroke, again, every minute, two million neurons are dying. And so we hustled so much to save time in the field. The good metric is that we, in most of these cases, have started the IVTPA. So the onset of symptoms to treatment time, um, the you know needle time, that's already done. But we don't want to stay in the ER for half an hour, just go straight to angio if the patient's clinically stable. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you. Dr. Noor, do you have a specific case that you could give us more information that I, I don't know was particularly amazing other than the one we just heard about from, from Captain Hill? Certainly. I think it still speaks to um, how much I've learned from these guys in the field and how much that uh, information has been reciprocal. Uh, one of our other paramedics, paramedic Cusick, was on a call that we did not respond to because a patient had fallen while trying to get up from a chair. and. Um, 
that patient, when he examined her, had subtle pronation of uh, her left upper extremity, and that was really it. Very subtle exam finding, and based on that, he attached the mobile stroke unit. And um, in attaching the unit, when we arrived and uh, did uh, a more complete neurologic evaluation, the patient had neglect to double simultaneous stimulation, which is a very big cortical sign. And based on that, our suspicion grew higher. And that patient had a subdural hemorrhage with herniation and very subtle symptoms. That patient ended up going to the OR that same afternoon and back to clinical baseline in the morning. So I think that speaks uh, really widely to this is not only a tool for initiating TPA faster, but this is uh, really dovetails into the LA stroke systems of care and um, how we can route patients to the appropriate locations. Um, we have a question from online that said, how would you describe the support you've received from Fraser and Samsung with the unit? I think that's an excellent question. Uh, one of the most important things in the project like this is the partners you have, and to have reliable partners and to have trustworthy partners and technology that exceeds expectations is really important. We've had a phenomenal interaction with both Fraser and Samsung, and we're very grateful for that. Where do you see this going in the future? for LA County in particular, but also just worldwide. So part of our funding from LA County is to do geospatial mapping of the stroke pockets of the entirety of the county. And what our hopes would be is that every part of the county would be covered by uh, a fleet of these units and that we have resource allocation to the areas that have a higher stroke volume with these units and um, to be able to cut down on the burden of uh, stroke. Um, one last question for the paramedics. So is this, um, I, I think that Dr. Nora and you guys have answered it a little bit, but are you full-time on this rig? It sounds like you're doing a little bit of everything you've always done plus this. I'm going to leave that to Kenny. <laughs> Kenny's full-time. I'm his backup when he needs me, when he needs vacation. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, we, we just started in January, January 8th, we started a 40-hour uh, position where we're going every week, Monday to Thursday, 6 to 4. Uh, at this current time, yes, I'm the uh, permanent paramedic on the on the rig, and if I take a day off, sick day, all the above, uh, then Matt would uh, step in. So, how was it working before that? Uh, we started in September in Santa Monica, and there it was once a week, off a week, once a week, and uh, we would do it on a voluntary basis. Oh, fantastic. So it sounds like you've gotten a lot of partnership from your fire department Absolutely, as well. and, and I, I'm really appreciative to the wonderful guys who've really stepped up, showed interest, and really followed through with this. And so that's a great thing, again, about having excellent partners, and that makes a huge difference. And um, at first, we had six to eight guys who were trained um, to do this, and were able to kind of uh, have them as backup reserve for, for the unit, operating the unit. And we had a request to be more inside the unit, uh, just to be able to see it a little better. We'll, so we'll save that for we'll last. We'll save that for last. Okay. okay. Thank you, Colin. Uh, uh, I was just going to ask, so from a paramedic standpoint, what's the biggest surprise? What have you learned that there's no way you would have learned it had you, you know, were you not on this unit? I think just the sheer capability of the apparatus, um, the equipment that's that's in it. I mean, there's a, there's a refrigerator in here. For, for TPA, I mean, we don't have that on our fire engines. So I think just, just that overall knowledge, seeing what actually, how far healthcare can really go, I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned personally. Do you think the fire department, like Santa Monica, do you think the stroke awareness of all the medics is far greater than it was before this? I think so. I think um, from a personal standpoint, I know the guys who have been trained to operate this unit, the 68, as Dr. Nor was mentioning earlier, our stroke awareness has, has skyrocketed. And I think for, for us, when we go back to the stations, whether we're working on the apparatus, whether we're working on the fire engines, we go back and share our experiences and we explain why this is a good thing. I mean, in Santa Monica, we have three stroke centers within the area, but as I said before, there's only one comprehensive. So guys are like, why are we going here when we have this place right here? And why are we putting someone in here when we have a, a stroke center that's two blocks away? So I think our knowledge of that, sharing that with them, explaining to them the importance of, of actually doing a good assessment, recognizing signs, I think that's made everyone's stroke awareness greatly increase. Anything else? 
Okay, so Dr. Noor will let you wrap it up. Um, we are going to have another session with you, a little bit more program oriented later. Great, so we really appreciate the opportunity and I'm speaking on behalf of our whole team and I'd actually like to ask two of our other team members to step in for a moment. Um, Ed and Kevin, if you guys can please come in. <laughs> Surprise. You can come in here so they can see you. I'm not sure if they can see you. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Don't be shy. Um, Ed is our neurocritical care trained uh, nurse, and Kevin is our CT technologist. And really, the these guys and this team, our heart and soul is into it. And we are really trying to do what's best for the patient. And I think um, uh, the chemistry of this, the team speaks to it, and working well together fast really speaks to it, and having that trained personnel that can respond anywhere is, is really important. So we're very grateful for the partnership of everybody on the team. Okay. Okay, so we can show you guys a bit inside of our unit. And so um, if you can see here, this is the patient gurney. And this can actually go to wherever the patient is. Once the patient is loaded on here, uh, we can adjust the seat here where the Thank you. Where uh, the CT scanner will actually come out to the patient. And, uh, as many of you know, but maybe not everybody, the CT actually has to be leveled in order for the scan to happen. And so we look for even grounds, but our Fraser ambulance is also able to level up to 7% of incline. And um, we have uh, the IV pumps here. We have the pump for the uh, contrast for CTA. Here's our CT. It's a head-only CT. We can uh, look for up to C2 level. And um, basically our equipment, our medications, our supplies. Uh, this is fully equipped for us to go on our next dispatch week. This is our monitor. And we have the fridge here for in the future to carry Praxabine, which is the reversal agents for Pradaxa, which needs to be refrigerated. And um, basically, this console behi behind you where we can see the interpretation of the CT images immediately. And we have telemedicine system here, which is through InTouch, which really provides wonderful telemedicine um, capabilities. And so this express in-touch unit can actually come off and go into the field where um, the physician can evaluate from the beginning of the encounter for when the patient uh, is really um, in their home or wherever the doctor's office, wherever it happens. We have an additional customization here, which is called a PTZ camera. This camera, the physician has 270 degree rotation of and able to zoom up to the pupil size of the patient. We've also customized our vehicle with Fraser to add an additional microphone uh, in order for us to hear better. And uh, there's a small camera in the corner here where our paramedic and uh, on our team sitting in the front can actually be able to see what's going on with the patient in the back. We have intubated patients in the field. We've given intraosseous medications in the field. And I think there's a lot more that's gonna be done um, in this pre-hospital um, practice. And I think this is a, a, an era where there's a change in paradigm in stroke care. Thank you.